Many of you have maybe heard of stories of uh, that they're questioning the Big Bang. The physicists uh, have seen some pictures taken by the James Webb Telescope that is making them rethink of whether the ba Big Bang ever happened because they're getting conflicting data. So uh, one thing I want to point out here is in the verse here, and this is not calling somebody a fool. I'm just reading the verse. It says, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Okay, so, you know, a person can take that position that there is no God, even if they don't have any proof. They just believe that way uh, without really investigating and finding out if there's a God or not. There's many that have done the investigation of they indeed have found out that there is a God. But this is something, this is a personal journey that someone has to take. Many in the scientific realm, they depending on scientific law and human thought and ideas, and they want to construct a pattern of the universe uh, from the data that they see. So let's take a, a quick look at, this is a NASA picture, uh, and uh, they made a map of how the Big Bang, they think the Big Bang happened. And so they, they think that a big explosion happened in from a singularity, right? And then you have this expansion of gases in here, and then it just starts going out in year, mil, hundreds of thousands of years and then millions. And you can see that as the light energy settles down, it starts constructing and forming galaxies. Okay, well, they've taken a telescope to try to peek back into areas of the universe that tend to look at this area and look back here. And what they've found is they've found some soft, full galaxies full of billions of stars that, based on the... Uh, uh, Big Bang Theory would take millions of years to form. And so here the James Webb Telescope is taking pictures of it. And we've got big galaxies back here that would say it, they're at the 400 million year mark or the 380, you know, in this area where it's fairly new. But it would take billions of years for some of these stars to form. So what happened? That doesn't make sense. Why can we have a fully formed galaxies in this area when we're looking back in time when it should be all fuzzy and, and building and maybe having some building blocks to galaxies? But that's not what they found. They found fully fledged galaxies, which is throwing everybody into a quandary and wondering, uh, did the Big Bang even happen? Okay, and even some are saying, well, maybe uh, uh, time, you know, maybe there's something to do with time. There's no such thing as time. And so they're really pulling their hair out trying to figure out what happened. Well, as I said before, uh, the fool in their heart says there's no God. Now, if they would just go back to Genesis and look at what God said he did, then you, you could maybe get put some answers together here as to what happened. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So before there's let there be light, which this is equivalent to when the Big Bang would be started, but it really wasn't a bang. It just was light got created, right? All this energy and light, right, got created. And, you know, when you have a lot of energy and light, it wants to move, okay? But here I just wanted to notice he was hovering over the face of the water. So waters is H2O. So a lot of scientists believe that hydrogen and helium were the first elements. Well, wait a minute, we got oxygen over here. H2O. All right, so that's something they missed there. 
right? And then God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. This is what, this. I like this part. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. So when I think of a firmament, I think of some kind of layer, some kind of a dividing area, right? Now, most people will think that, well, that means the waters that were on the earth versus the waters that were in the sky. Well, let's go drop down here. I see uh, down here where he makes the stars on day four. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens, to divide the day from the night, and let them be set for signs and seasons for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament, so that the heavens give lights to the earth. Okay, so this is what's really interesting here is the stars didn't even get created till day four. Whereas you've got light here, let there be light. So this is your equivalent to the Big Bang light, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a bang. It's it's a starting point. It, it let there be light. It didn't exist before he said it. But over here, we go to the IMAP, they, this was at the beginning of the universe, and they were doing a microwave map, which took a picture of the relative hot spots and uh, how the expansion was occurring. And there have been some that have noted that the expansion wasn't increasing as a explosion pattern, but as a stretching pattern, like a balloon stretches when you blow it up. All right, so let's go to a verse now. And this is Isaiah 45, 12. It says, I made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens. And all their hosts, this is the stars that I've commanded. So here's he saying, I did it with my own hands. Now, you know, when you use your hands to do your work, you, you know, you grab a hold of things and move them, right? Well, God is spirit, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and he stretched out the heavens with his hands. So this makes me even wonder about the dark matter that they talk about, because dark matter is invisible. You can't see it, but you can see networks of things. So when you're stretching out the universe, and by the way, uh, if the stars were made on day four, right? Let them be for lights in the and get right. God made the two great lights: the greater light to rule by day, the lesser light to rule by night. He made the stars also, and their purpose of the lights in the firmament of the heavens was to divide the day from the night. Okay, I got the sun and the moon. Okay, yeah. And let them be for signs and seasons for days and years. So they're measuring time. They're, they're markers. So a lot of people are using uh, the celestial bodies in the heavens to uh, get into time and measure things and changes uh, in the heavens. All right, but, but here's what's really cool. This is what really got me going, is right here. Let's divide the waters from the waters. He, guess God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. So you've got waters in the seas, and God called the firmament heaven. Okay, so you got the waters under the heavens, and that's your seas, and the dry land appeared from there, and the dry land was earth. 
But what about the waters that were above the firmament? Where does that come from? Well, there are uh, many clouds in the heavens and uh, they have lots of gases in there. And one of the things that it has is water in these uh, uh, nebulas have waters and the nebulas, the water in the nebulas are considered what are called star nurseries or places where stars can be born. And there, and it's going on now, even now. But the waters are used to slow the process of the star growing because once there's a fission reaction, it starts growing and growing, getting hot. If there's nothing to stop that heat, it can just grow and blow up so that the waters slow that process down a little bit. And so it allows the stars to grow in a tempered way. And now you have the stars. So you can see him dividing the waters from the waters. You can see him stretching out the heavens with his hands. And so when you think of stretching, you think of, you know, think of your hands pushing against something and pushing outward. And you're stretching this universe. And by the way, since the stars weren't even created to day four, there was no time because God's in an eternal place. Time had doesn't exist yet. So if you can stretch the heavens with your hands, can you not stretch them faster than time? Can you not stretch them faster than the speed of light? Right? And so you're stretching this whole conglomeration of gases and stars and right. Whoop, and you're putting everything where you want to put them. And, you know, it's really interesting when you look at some of these constellations, like the Big Dipper. I mean, come on, that's pretty obvious that it's a pattern there. And, you know, other other types of star constellations were very unique. And, 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 and how did the stars line up like that in patterns, right? You know, God talked to Job and said, where were you when I created Orion? Where were you? See, the fool in his heart says there's no God, so he doesn't have a reference point of God uh, if he's just trying to look at the data by itself. And that's why they stumbled and fumbled now, because now they're finding galaxies at the very ends of the universe or the beginnings of the universe where they would think they would find little wimpy looking galaxies that are just barely forming, but yet they have fully formed galaxies that have billions of stars that would take billions of years to create in their Big Bang Theory. And so now their whole Big Bang Theory is in question. Much easier to just look at the word and look at the glory of God. So I hope that helped everybody in some fashion. I hope that gave you some interest to go looking in the Bible yourself to find things because there are so many marvelous things in the word of God, so many answers. And what's really cool is he's even got an answer for your own personal life because he sent his son Jesus for to die for our sins and to help us. And anybody that reaches out to him and asks him for help, especially in this crazy time that we got going on in the world right now, he's willing to help. Reach out to him and seek him. He said, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. So just seek him out. Talk to him. Ask him. Ask him to show you that he's real. And then you too can experience that. Wow. This stuff really is real. God bless. And have a blessed day.